I'm just gonna have you introduce yourself. My name is Gurdo Farid Miskinzoda. I'm the head of the Shi'i Studies Unit at the Institute of Ismaili Studies. This is a manuscript of a work that relates to the early Shi'i, a history of Shi'i Islam. The title of the work is As Sahifa As Sajadiyya or As Sahifa Al Kamila As Sajadiyya, uh, which can roughly be uh, translated to English as the Psalms or the complete Psalms of As Sajjad. The title of the manuscript is uh, uh, related to one could even say is derived from the honorific title of one of the earliest Shi'i Imams, Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was mainly known by his honorific title, Zayn al Abidin, the ornament of the worshippers, or as Sajjad, the one who constantly prostrates in prayer and worship. Um, the importance of this work is uh, based on the fact that it actually is one of the earliest uh, sources and representatives of the Muslim historical and literary tradition. And as many works that belong to that period, the, this, the, there are many issues with the history of the text, but also the uh, authorship and the history of its transmission. Therefore, many versions of this or many editions of this work contain a very long history of its transmission. This particular manuscript uh, contains a very long history of the transmission of the text that takes us back to uh, Muhammad from his father, which in other words means that this particular edition or this particular version of the text has been translated from Zayn al-Abidin through his son Muhammad al-Baqir and his grandson Jafar al-Sadiq. This is essentially a dua manual, a prayer manual, and um, that is uh, why it is um, sometimes also titled um, uh, in many editions and manuscripts as as Sahifa, As Sajjadiyya Al Kamila, Ad'iyya wa Munajat, Al Imam Ali ibn Al Hussein, Zayn al Abidin, the complete psalms of the household of the Prophet, or the complete psalms of As Sajjad, uh, the prayers and supplications of Imam Ali ibn Hussein, Zayn al Abidin. Um, as mentioned, it's a dua manual. In fact, it is claimed to be one of the oldest dua manuals, and that's um, why it is also known as the complete psalms of the household of the prophets. In the complexity of studying this work is also related to the fact that there are several, um, actually many versions and reductions of this work, uh, but there are also more than 20 commentaries on this particular work. It, um, the most common version of the work consists of, of uh, 54 uh, supplications. Some uh, editions contain uh, further 15 munajat. Um, it is also uh, translated to several languages. In particular, it has been translated to Persian um, as early as the Safavid period. And there's an English translation uh, by the famous William Chittick that has been produced in the 1980s.
This particular manuscript is beautifully presented, expensively decorated, and it is also important because it contains a parallel uh, Persian text in addition to the original Arabic. This obviously makes it very useful for scholars, but also for believers who, who speak either of the languages. Um, they can consult uh, either the Persian text or the Arabic or both, so it becomes very useful. As I mentioned, the manuscript is beautifully and lavishly done, which talks about the esteem uh, this book uh, was held uh, in, even in the Qajar period, uh, but uh, always. Um, it is also uh, produced on um, a thin gloss paper, uh, which is quite expensive, which was quite expensive at the time. Um, it is written in a fine Nasri script um, and it is beautifully decorated, especially the opening page is lavishly decorated. Uh, the outside of the box is, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the text box is decorated in floral patterns in red, blue, green and gold and the text box are also gilded and illuminated in the same colors each section begins with the with the text that in, in a red gilded box which makes it very easy to distinguish where one chapter or one section begins and where the other one is um, ending uh, the color form tells us that it has been produced in the Hijjah 1279, which coincides with May 1863 of the Common Era, which puts it in the Qajar period. The color form also tells us that the scribe was named Ali Muhammad ibn Muhammad al-Baqir, and that it was commissioned or it was produced for a person named Oho Mirza Mahmoud. This particular text is important for at least three reasons. Uh, first, obviously, it, this manuscript itself is a work of art. It is, um, uh, it is an example of uh, a fine Islamic book binding and manuscript production, in particular during the Qajar period. It also tells us about the history of transmission of this text uh, during the Qajar period. Uh, but it also gives us, as I mentioned, an indication of how important this particular work was. In fact, it is considered one of the most popular and important texts in the Shi'i tradition only after the Quran and Nahj al-Balagha, which are the collections of the sermons of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the first uh, Imam of the Shi'a. This work is also important for a second reason, because obviously being ascribed to the Shi'i Imam, the content of it becomes very important. Um, Zain al-Abidin was the third or fourth Imam of the Shia, depending which group you talk about, uh, and he, he was born about 660 uh, in Medina, he survived the massacre of Karbala in 680, as a result of which his father, al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, which makes him the son of the first Shi'i Imam, and Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, was brutally murdered. After the event of uh, Karbala, Zayn al-Abidin himself uh, stayed um, um, uh, away from a direct confrontation with the authorities and chose to lead pious life, devoting himself to mainly worship, prayer and studying. And that's why we have the title as Sajjad, the one who constantly prostrates in prayer and worship. But with the Imamat of Zayn al-Abidin, there are also uh, we see a change in the attitude of the Imams and the community towards the scope and nature of the authority of the successor of the Prophet Muhammad. First of all, 
the Husseini line becomes an important element in the lineage of the Imams. Uh, secondly, uh, the um, nature of the authority or the station of the Imam, the religious station of the Imam, was no longer seen to be dependent or related on his political uh, authority or his political office and power. Um, then we, we also see the beginning of um, the practice of taqiyya, dissimulation and concealment, um, which eventually leads to a shift in the doctrine of imama, the eventual articulation of which is ascribed to no other than the son of Zain al Abidin, Muhammad al-Baqir, and his grandson Jafar al-Sadiq. Thirdly, the importance of this work is obviously connected to the very content of this book. As I mentioned, it contains prayers, uh, supplications um, on uh, that are that are believed to be taught by Zain al Abidin. That in itself makes them very important for the daily practice and worship of the Shia. In addition to that, um, these is this the content of this book is one of the finest examples of early Arabic um, uh, literature in the Muslim tradition. Um, it's an example of the, of, uh, of uh, a, a, a very uh, fine um, Arabic prose, let's say. Um, and that makes it central, it continues to be important for the daily practice of the Shia in terms of their practice of dua, dhikr and munajat, which are all considered different forms of worship. We are therefore very proud to house this particular manuscript in our special collections and we ensure that scholars from around the world have access to it and we also make sure that we preserve it for the future generations.